It's Paul Marsh here on Express. So glad to be with you as always. Thank you very much for tuning in. Now it is World Mental Health Day today and I am joined by TV presenter and success coach Katie Hill. Katie, thank you so much for talking to me. Good morning, Paul. It's, oh, it is still morning, isn't it? Lovely to be here. Thank you for having me. Has it been a long day? No, it's always a long day, but amazing day. <laughs> <laughs> if it's 10.30 in the morning, you already think it's afternoon. You were up early. <laughs> You're right. You know it. <laughs> <laughs> I've been there as well. Yes, I was up at six to get work done before the kids got up. Yeah, that's what I do, though. That's what I encourage my clients to do, because you feel like you've got ahead on the day. And, and actually, it's a key part of making goals happen is having those things that give you that hit of dopamine because you've achieved them early in the morning. And then you're like, look at me. Let's go. <laughs> right. So we are going to be talking about the top 25 goals that Brits are setting for themselves. Now, I've had a look at this 25. And yes. let's face it, I think if we could all do these 25, the world would be a much better place, wouldn't it? Well, I'm just pleased that Brits are setting goals. I think, you know, I, I feel like goal setting is a reasonably recent thing in terms of personal goals. I feel like they've been in companies for years. We've been talking about smart goals, but actually setting family goals and, you know, goals for you and your spouse like, is so important. And it's exciting that people are doing it. Um, are you goal orientated? I'm massively, yes. As a coach, absolutely. <laughs> this is what I love, though. It's... um. It's about, and I and I think for me, I, I learned at a young age the importance of goals. Like, you know, I was a five-year-old kid. I used to get sewing kits for Christmas. I didn't want them. I watched Blue Peter. I saw girls jumping out of planes and doing amazing, brave stuff. And that was what I wanted to do. And so, you know, that became my big target. And then, you know, I wrote to the editor when I was a teenager and he wrote back and said, get experience. I worked in local radio and local telly for free, went back to him and I was like, this is what you told me to do. And this is what I've done about it because this is the key with goals. It's about having this amazing vision, but crucially taking the tangible steps that are gonna move you towards that vision. And it's the two things married together that make it happen. Is that what moved you? So after obviously TV and Blue Peter and everything else like that, is that what moved you into success coaching? Yeah, so I was doing, you know, uh, TV is amazing and I did loads of incredible jobs for the BBC and then I kind of moved into radio and I hosted the chart and I had like 25 years of amazing broadcast career. But then in 2017, I was like, you know what? I don't know how I got here and what and I was living how so many of us do. I was living the life that had unfolded in front of me, life by default, as I describe it, not by design. And I hit pause retrained as a coach and now I have the most amazing um, business where I equip and empower others to create amazing goals and achieve them essentially and and it's incredible and it's so rewarding for me and I think you know making sure that you have a vision for your life and are putting the goals in place to get you there is key to feeling ultimate fulfillment. It's funny how there are so many people who, we obviously, when you're younger, we all see the people on TV or radio, music, whatever it is, these, these big, huge, famous people. And it's funny how many of these big, huge, famous people step back from that spotlight to find something that just feels good. Yeah, and don't get me wrong, the, the TV felt amazing. And I kind of feel like life has come full circle. You know, when I was on the show... I used to have, and, and actually only last week, a girl came running, a girl, a woman came running up to me in London and was like, are you Katie Hill? And I was like, yes. And she's like, you're the reason I became a surgeon. And I was like, oh my gosh. Wow. Because, because girls like were encouraged to do all this incredible stuff. And now for me, it feels like life's come full circle to a degree because, you know, back in the day, I encouraged others to play bigger by jumping out of planes and flying fast jets. And now I encourage and equip people as adults to play bigger. And it's always been my underlying why has been to help other people to um, get brave with what's possible in your life. And now I help them actually action it and make it happen. So I love what I get to do. And, and you know, getting to work with HSBC, who did this research, you know, 2000 people they interviewed and actually to discover that so many of us are setting goals is like music to my ears, because this is the stuff that I talk about all the time. Now, I'm going to put you on the spot, OK? I'm going to yeah. ask you which of these 25 goals is something that yeah. you aspire for? 
Uh, well, number one is drink more water. And uh, I know it's radio, but I've got a massive thing of water next to me right now. Um, I, I fail you... horrifically at that. See, see, and we all know coffee. that we I'm want coffee. to do it. Okay, well, I love coffee. And actually, the findings found a lot of people were trying to drink less coffee. Um, but I think it's about really getting intentional in all honesty with with how we're living and you know recognizing that if you set a goal if you set a big vision for your life you are more likely to make it happen than if you don't right so for example let's 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 break it down and be practical here so if you wanted to go on a family holiday to florida next summer that's amazing right but i would say sit down with the family think about where you want to go how it's going to feel you know really get into the energy of oh my gosh we're going to be sat in on the lounges or we're going to be at disney world and imagine how it's going to be on that huge roller coaster and actually create a vision board right you can take the girl out of blue peter but you can't take the blue peter out of the girl <laughs> get a big bit of paper like get you know pictures out of magazines or online and words for how it's going to feel and really create an amazing vision for how this holiday is going to be put it on the fridge so you can see it every day and then you start with the end in mind and work backwards to create the tangible goals the steps that are going to get you there and that's how you make something happen uh you've got to make it realistic obviously so you know if if disneyland is maybe a two-year goal not a one-year goal that's all stuff to think about um but it's about getting intentional with life and it's about recognizing that we are creating our own reality and what is it that you want to make happen, but crucially creating those steps along the way that are gonna make it happen. Because there's a wonderful saying, um, if your mind can't see the steps, your heart will ask to pause. So we can get overwhelmed, however great the big picture is, we can feel overwhelmed if we haven't worked out the tangible steps that are gonna get us there. Be that saving, be it planning, whatever it is that's gonna make that thing happen. I'm very much goal orientated. If, if I don't have something to work towards, I, I really yeah. struggle. And yeah. for example, eating healthy and losing weight, et cetera. If I have a holiday to go on, yeah. then I will absolutely 100% hit my weight target. But this year yeah. we haven't, and my diet has gone completely out the window. We're going back abroad yeah. next year, so I know that next year, I know I'll be on it. It's 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 yeah. great. So I've had a, a quick little look at this uh, list. Drink more water is at the top, and I think we could all live by that. Really, can be more positive. Yeah. That's literally yeah. what this radio show is all about. I'm about positivity, as bringing that to the people as much as I can. Spending yeah. more time with family again is another one, isn't it? You know. We all get consumed by work and everything else that's going on. So spending more time with family is, is something we all strive for. But the one that I really want to bring up is have yeah. more patience. Yeah, that's <laughs> I know. Something, right? That's something I'm actively working on. Yeah. And it's and it's actually about, you know, with something like that, obviously you can't have a kind of tangible uh, goal and the milestones to get there. But actually it's about becoming mindful you know i know it's world mental health day and it's checking in with yourself and going you know maybe at lunchtime um how have i been more patient this morning where could i have been more patient with people or how could i have you know shown up better in my life like it's it's taking time to look at who you are and this is what i love so much in my work as a coach it's about getting people to ask themselves the big life questions that we never ask ourselves. And it's getting people intentional with the life that they're living and back in control. Because so often we can go, oh, my life just feels off, but I don't know why. And it will be because um, you're not feeling fulfilled in one of the key areas of life. And, and, you know, before I trained as a coach, I wasn't aware of these areas. And I feel like a lot of the stuff that I do as a coach should be taught in schools because, you know, you don't necessarily need some of the stuff, but you do need the life skills mm. that coaching um, brings and equips you with. And um, I think it's, you know, recognizing that we are all choosing our life and how we're showing up and what energy we're bringing in and you know are we being more patient with people all of that stuff it's it's amazing it's gold <laughs> i think i've always thought that um when you look at a huge picture and you think it's overawing if you take the small little bite-sized chunks and you keep taking those small little bite-sized chunks sooner or later that big picture it doesn't look quite as frightening as what it used to anymore yeah absolutely it's uh, it's the compound effect right it's and it's i call it skiing the bit in front of you so i remember the first time i ever went skiing got off the chairlift and i was like i'm literally not going down that mountain it's enormous 
and the instructor said to me just ski the bit in front of you yep. and when yep. you look at the six feet in front of you don't look at the big terrifying <laughs> overwhelming yep. picture although hopefully a family holiday isn't terrifying <laughs> literally ski the bit in front and i still say to myself if i've got a spectacularly full week just ski the bit in front what yes. do i need to do for yes. today get through and the next what... few hours yeah exactly but i think you know i love what i get to do and this is such a great time of year to people to think about goal setting um and it's a wonderful time of year that you know hsbc did this research because i think for people to ha listen to something like today and become more mindful about what goals they're setting and how they're approaching life it's exciting for 2024. now katie it's been great talking to you but if people want to find out a little bit more about this hsbc research and the top 25 goals where can they do that yeah. Um, if they head to hsbc.co.uk, there's a thing called an investment calculator where they can kind of look at how they can feel better supported. Um, and if anyone wants to connect with me on Instagram, I'm at I'm Katie Hill. I would love to hear from you. It is me. It's not somebody on my behalf. Um, and katiehill.com is my website. But everyone listening, you know, just think about what your most amazing 2024 looks like. Get some big visions in there and then work backwards and set the goals that are going to support that vision. Katie, it's been so great talking to you. Thank you very Lovely much. Lovely chatting. Um, Thank you. Have a great day, everyone. I was debating whether or not to tell you that I used to have a massive crush on you, but I've decided against telling you. Actually. Well, I, it's OK. I'm, I'm debating whether to ask you if it's past or present tense, but I won't. <laughs> <laughs> Let's leave it there. Uh, yeah. Okay. Have a great day. I don't want to get divorced yet. <laughs> Take care. Thanks, Katie.